President Donald Trump campaigning at a massive rally, tens and tens of thousands of people. We have pictures coming up in just a second to show you the crowd size. This as top Democrats have now called on his opponent, Joe Biden, to step down. We've been hearing it since the debate. Uh, multiple editorial boards, they have done the same. Left-wing hosts, pundits, cable news have been pleading with Joe to please leave the race. Many of Biden's friends and allies publicly diagnosing him with dementia and said he was not capable of serving another four years. Even George Stephanopoulos, who just interviewed Biden, said he doesn't think Biden can serve another term. This has been transparent. This has been obvious for over four years. President Trump addressed this tonight as a huge cover-up. But everyone around Biden, every Democrat, the state-run media mob, they have all been involved in the Joe Biden cognitive decline cover-up. They all lied, and now they're all acting shocked. They're feigning surprise and another, you know, lie of historic proportions. They're not, they've known the whole time. And with that said, well, Joe Biden, in many ways, well, just had the best day since the debate. With the help of his usual teleprompter, the president delivered a whopping, yeah, pretty decent for him, 15-minute speech in front of NATO. Uh, Donald Trump's speech just went on nearly an hour and 20 minutes. What should be, by the way, a 15-minute speech, a layup for any U.S. president, especially with a teleprompter. Well, for President Biden, it was high drama all day long, all eyes on Biden, article after article. The world is watching. Our allies are watching. And he managed to exceed what were very low expectations. And still, it wasn't a particularly strong performance. You decide. To end Ukraine's democracy destroy Ukraine's, Ukraine, Ukraine's culture and to wipe Ukraine off the map. Even before Russia bombs were falling in Ukraine, the alliance acted. I ordered the U.S. reinforcements at NATO's eastern flank. The United States, Germany, the Netherlands, Romania, and Italy will provide Ukraine with the equipment for five additional strategic air defense systems. And key, remember, fellows and ladies, Supposed to fall in five days, remember? I'm pleased to award you the highest civilian honor the United States can bestow, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Ask the middle. <laughs> Military, come forward. Despite a little struggles, well, Biden appears to have done enough in his 15-minute speech, it, uh, well, to pretty much stay in the race, maybe even silence some of the calls for him to step aside. Now, couple that with the consistent support, and that was uh, very evident today, from the Congressional Black Caucus, and Biden might well make it past the DNC as his party's nominee. The odds are higher tonight. Even Congressman Jerry Nadler, very disappointed, is once again now supporting President Biden, even though he had called for him to step aside, and he showed a lot of consternation in his endorsement. Take a look. Mr. President made very clear yesterday that he's running, and for me, that's dispositive. We have to support him. Do you, you, have, him directly? Do you have concerns you about Biden? Directly? Do you have concerns about him being on the top of the ticket? Whether I have concerns or not, I, it's, not it's beside the point. He is, he's going to be our nominee, and we all have to support him. That was a pretty long pause when you, asked, when you were asked about concerns. What are your concerns about President Biden being at the top of the ticket right now? Um, I think he has shown that uh, the concerns we've had as a result of the debate, my concern really is that he could have another bad debate performance. It appears that Democrats are now resigned to the sad fact that a cognitively impaired Joe Biden will be their party's nominee in 2024. The most likely alternative, Vice President Harris, is so deeply unpopular, she's still polling lower than Joe, if you can believe that. By the way, we'll get reaction tonight from Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. He'll weigh in on the most disliked vice president in American history, whose continued unpopularity all but solidifies Biden's nomination. But let's be very clear here tonight. This is a nightmare scenario for Democrats. The cat is out of the bag. It was never really in the bag, but Democrats far and wide have already told the American people that Joe is not fit to serve. For once, they were honest, but only because they simply couldn't hide it anymore after that debate. 
they've always known, they've always lied, they've always covered up. What has been nothing but a repulsive lie cover-up of historic proportions. How do you ever trust these people, the Democratic Party, the media mob that were complicit? How do you ever trust them again after all the other lying that they've done? But now, well, they're going to ask the American people to vote for this very weak, frail, cognitive wreck, a guy who can only really function during the hours of, what, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. with an afternoon nap mixed in, who is now pledging to governors that he will go to bed at 8 p.m. Well, that brings us to this old ad from the Clinton campaign. It raises a pretty important question, more relevant today than ever. Take a look. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. But there's a phone in the White House and it's ringing. Something's happening in the world. Your vote will decide who answers that call. Really? Well, Donald Trump never sleeps. So what happens if Biden gets a 3 a.m. phone call? What would happen during a real crisis when the president is needed around the clock, 24 straight hours, 36, 48 hours straight? Who's going to be in charge when your beleaguered president falls asleep? Who decides or becomes so sick? Maybe he has a cold. He can no longer function or has a hard time shaking off jet lag two weeks after an international trip. You know, will Dr. Jill Biden be in charge? She certainly appears to be a little drunk with power, but the first lady, she was not elected president, is not qualified to serve as president. On Monday, she hit the campaign trail while Joe stayed home, multiple stops, three states. Her husband rested, prepping for his big 15-minute NATO speech, likely joined by his son, Hunter. Is this a sign that Hunter is going to play a bigger role in another Biden term? According to reports, the former admitted addict with admitted he had no experience, for example, you know, running an international family syndicate becomes a businessman, recently participating in high level meetings with his father. Pretty frightening scenario. And what happens when Biden ultimately gets even worse? Remember, we don't officially know Biden's current medical condition. Now, John Solomon, JustTheNews.com, reporting tonight, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is now going to subpoena Biden's doctor and seek records from Biden's medical visits. Take a look at this. Now we've asked for the White House physician to come in. We expect him to come in for a transcribed interview or I'll subpoena him uh, for a deposition. Either way, we're going to know, ask a lot of questions about the report that uh, the White House physician issued just a few months ago that said Joe Biden was in tip-top physical condition. By the way, if he's in such tip-top shape, release the hurt tapes. Now, despite all of the uncertainty, it does appear the elites in the Democratic Party, they have failed to oust Joe. Now, remember, Biden won the Democratic primary, but the voters voted for him. It appears now that the will of the primary voters will be respected, even if it leads to a disaster come November. The polls, they're not looking good for Joe Biden. In Wisconsin now, he's running a full 12 points behind the Democratic senator, and Trump is up in every battleground state. But a lot can happen between now and November. Democrats just imported millions of illegal immigrants. Right now, this is going on in Washington. They're now planning to block the SAVE Act. That would require voters to prove American citizenship before voting and before registering to vote. So why are Democrats so fiercely against proof of citizenship, voter ID? signature verification. Why are they against any and all election integrity efforts so we can have integrity in our elections, confidence in our results? In multiple states, mail-in ballots, drop boxes will once again take center stage. Early voting starts in 68 days. This is not a secure process. To make matters worse, whoever wins the nomination will undoubtedly get the usual support from the state-run media mob. They will get in line, and another, you know, protective bubble might soon start to form around Joe Biden. But the American people, you now know the truth, you see the truth, and you know they've been lying for four-plus years. They know Joe is struggling. They've always known. They can feel his disastrous policies. They lie about those. And hopefully, change is on the way.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.